What's up guys, Dustin McDangles back here with another video and in this video today we're going to be going over game one between the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Tampa Bay Lightning and man oh man what a game it was, looked to be an absolute blowout, thought it would be a massive comeback and it ended up being a blowout as what we thought when the game ended after the first period but before we do get into the full recap breakdown of this game be sure to drop a thumbs up on this video if you guys have been enjoying all the other videos that have been coming out on all the games so far. And hit that subscribe button if you are new to the channel and like anything NHL hockey related. We're going to keep it going here with this crazy game between the Lightning and Maple Leafs. And man, if you're a Leafs fan, I do feel sorry for you. They get your hopes up every year and they shoot you down like this. It's only one game, but man, that was... Quite an interesting game, and you'll see the stats as they're right on the screen right now for you guys to see. Just cr craziness. Three goals in the first by Tampa. Looks like it's going to be a blowout. Leafs get two. Bang, bang with O'Reilly and Nylander. Point gets one. Perry and Point gets another one to end the second period. And then it's Colton and Yarncroke getting the goals in the third you can see the stats right here. Shots on goal 34-31 in favor of the Lightning faceoffs. Well in favor for the Leafs, 56-44%. to And the power plays. It's not like the Leafs' power play was bad, but the Tampa Bay Lightning's power play was just that much better. Four for eight on the day. And when you're pulling a click like that, you're going to be winning most hockey games you're going to be in. Hits 42-39 in favor of the Leafs. Block shots 20-17 to for the Lightning. And giveaways 12-9. to I'd say more in favor of the team with less giveaways. And the Lightning only with 9. And really, I'd say the turning point in this game, it would I would have to say it was the bunting hit on Chernak. The elbow, you can call it whatever it was. Elbow to the head, elbow to the shoulder area. But it was a cheap shot. Five-minute major, that turned the tide for the game. Lightning gained a lot of momentum out of it, even though they were also missing Victor Hedman. We'll have to keep a close eye on that if Hedman will be out for an extended period of time, as well as Chernak. Could he have a concussion? Will he be out for the next game? That could be a huge loss for the Lightning if they don't have Hedman or Chernak. They're two of their top veteran defensemen. For all their playoff runs that they've had to the Cups that they've won and have made it to, that'd be tough and could play into the favor of the Tampa Bay Lightning, or sorry, into the hands of the Toronto Maple Leafs. But man, first game, all hyped up, jazzed up for the playoffs. The Leafs were fans, players, I'm sure. But you could just tell the first 10 minutes of the game, they were scared to be out there. They were scared to make a mistake, and they made a lot of them just like the Colorado Avalanche did right here. Seattle just scored to my right off of a bad giveaway from the Avalanche. But anywho, back to the Leafs. Man, oh man, they, they just got to find a way to get it going in the playoffs, and they just can't. Looking at the points now, for the Lightning, Corey Perry had an absolute stellar game. One goal, two assists, throwing the body around, putting pucks on net, being a pest. He did Great, great game for him. Seven shots on goal, actually, for Corey Perry. Uh, let's see here. Kalorn had a decent game. Brayden, point two goals. Belmar, very good as well. Sorelli playing a Sorelli-type game. Kucherov, one goal, two assists. Stamkos was actually quiet, kept off the score sheet. But Kucherov, their big guys, were able to step up and play good hockey. On the back end, again, we'll have to wait and see what the deal is with Hedman and Chernak, but I'd say Radish and Sergachev were able to step up pretty well in the absence of them and still continue to perform uh, with some crazy ice time. I'm looking here, 26-23, uh, Ian Cole, 24-18, Radish, 23-37, not too bad for your first ever playoff hockey game, and Victor Hedman, only 6-35 of ice time, so it must be something serious if they kept him out for the remainder of the game and not come back. That's kind of scary if you're a Lightning fan. Vasilevsky looked pretty good. I'd say most of the goals really weren't his fault uh, at the end of the day. He played very solid between the pipes. Looking at the Leafs, Marner, he had three assists. You typically, we, we usually say, oh, Marner's a no-show in the playoffs. He has three assists. Didn't look great. Matthews, two assists. Um, nothing too crazy, though, but minus two for William, Nylander, O'Reilly, and Tavares. That is 
the their entire second line, which you can see near the end of the game, they started to mix and match lines to try to get something going. It just unfortunately was too little too late for the Leafs after they took that five minute major and then the Perry goal that sort of squeaked in along the post they then challenge that they go down five on three and give up another goal you just in that situation you can't really challenge that go down two men with already a five minute major on the board I just thought that that was a poor call by the coach on that one back end for the the Leafs Ice time pretty even throughout. Most going to TJ Brody, second most Hall. Uh, Then you got uh, Riley, Giordano, uh, so on and so forth. Um, And goaltending, Samsonov was pulled only, stopped 23 of 29. He did not look good whatsoever. I know a lot of it. There were some scramble plays that no one could have stopped, but there were certain goals where it's like, "Eh, you got to be stopping the puck. So Leafs got to try and figure it out. They've got a day of practice, recovery, watching film, figuring out what they can do to beat the Lightning. I know they beat the Lightning last year in game one, I'm pretty sure, 5 nothing. So it's kind of rolls reversed, 7-3. At least they got a couple goals on the board and get a little bit of confidence there. But they're going to have to figure it out if they want to win game two, which in my mind is a must win for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we'll have to wait and see what they can do to put it together. If you're the Tampa Bay Lightning, continue doing what you're doing. Fingers are crossed if you're a Lightning fan that Chernak and Hedman are good to go. If not, who are they going to pull in? I honestly don't know who is actually on their depth chart for defense that could come in and play at this moment in time. I don't have it pulled up. But if you're a Lightning fan, you really hope that the Hedman loss isn't too serious and that maybe he misses one or two games. That would be okay. But other than that, offensively, Lightning, keep doing what you're doing because you'll just keep the Leafs under pressure. So let me know what you guys think of this game. What do you think needs to be done on the Leafs side of things as well as the Lightning side of things? Do they just keep it rolling, see what happens? How are they going to deal with the injuries? We'll have to wait and see. What do the Leafs do to come out in Game 2 and not play like they did tonight? I want to hear you guys down below in the comments. But that's going to be it for this video. We've got two more games on tonight, Seattle, Colorado, and then Vegas and the Winnipeg Jets. Enjoy those games, guys. We'll have those videos out to you tomorrow before the night games for my recap for those. But that's going to be it for today. I hope you guys have a good one. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you are new. Like the video if you guys have enjoyed this. And um, again, have a good night and hope you guys have a good one. Stay dusty.